That is our science, um, scientific song, the basic scientific skill song. Okay. So, development of basic process skill is important as well as development of proper scientific attitude and values. So, science education aims to train students para makakisip po like scientists. And it would be expected on a development of attitude that good scientists able to display. So shaping student attitude, behavior, and motivation is necessary today because basic scientific skills are significant in improving student cognitive development and facilitating student active participation during the teaching learning process. Okay, so learners are natural scientists, tama po ba? They are full of questions about the world and how it works, and they are ready to find answers. So any scientist, of course, should have her own laboratory. So in this topic, so this will help you how to show or build a laboratory so for our learners, and it is also a great way to encourage and share the interest for our learners of different ages. Okay, so... We have the most essential learning competencies or MELCs for first quarter, grade 4, subclass, and unpack. So for now, discuss po muna natin itong MELCs in science, grade 4. So mag-focus muna tayo sa first quarter. So ngayon, dahil we are affected by this happening around the world, meron po tayong pandemic, ay napakahirap bitbitin yung usual na learning competencies na ginagamit natin in previous year, which is, um, which is the LAMP. So that's why the Department of Education, what they did is they have this MELC that focus in the instruction of the most essential competencies that our learners must acquire as we anticipate the challenges in learning delivery. Of course, as we deal with the most essential learning competencies or the MELCs, ito po ay galing sa masusing pag-aaral at validated ng mga expert. So uulitin ko po. What we have here po muna ay ang first quarter science grade 4. So this is already subtask and unpack. And we really need to understand and be guided dahil ito po ang magiging pantunan natin 
or guide in teaching science sa school year 2021. And next po dyan ay i-discuss po natin yung tinatawag po natin pedagogy. Okay. So, dito po sa ating most essential, um, most essential learning skill na po ito or MELC, napapaloob po dito ay ang Siguro alam naman po natin to ay ang tinatawag nating napapaloob po dito yung tinatawag nating content standards, performance standards, and the most essential learning competencies, of course. So, for our refreshment po, so, what is a content standard? So, in content standard, ito po yung tinatawag nating the what or it's the what. So, this identify and set the essential knowledge that should be learned. And for the performance standard, this is the how, or this describe the abilities and skills that the learners are expected to demonstrate in relation to the content standard. And of course, the MELCs are the most essential learning skills. This refers to the knowledge and understanding, skills and the attitude that learners need to demonstrate in every lesson or learning activity. So ito po yung day-to-day -day discussion po natin and daily activities ng mga learners. And take note po, I think alam naman po natin na dapat they are related to each other or they are parallel to each other. Okay. So, in quarter one po, para sa ating MELC, ngayong uh, first quarter, meron po tayong apat na MELCs na kailangan po nating ituro in seven weeks. Okay, so ito po yun. So, MELC 1, classify material based on the ability to absorb water, float, sink, and undergo decay. And then we have MELC2 that describe the changes in solid material when they bent, press, hammered, or cut. And then we have the MELC3 MELC3 that describe changes in the properties of material when exposed to certain conditions such as temperature or when mixed with other material. And then lastly, we have the MELC4 identify changes in materials whether useful or harmful to one's environment. So yan po yung sinasabi nating apat na MELC na kailangan po nating maturo within seven weeks. At isa-isahin po natin sila. So, in MELC 1, week 1, which is classify material based on the ability to absorb water, float, sink, and undergo decay. In this case, since the MELC is good for one week, it means that this MELC should be taught in five days. Kaya, kung makikita po natin dito, naka-unpack po siya in five days. So, ito po yung mga learning competencies na kailangan natin ituro from day one to day five. We're in, in day one, we go, um, our learners describe or uh, describe and classify materials based on the ability to absorb water. Day two, compare the characteristic of materials which do not absorb water and materials which absorb water. Day three, identify and classify material that float and sink. Day four, classify material that float and sink. And for day five, identify and classify material that undergo decay. Okay. And for MELC 2, para sa week 2 and 3, which is describe changes in solid material when they are bent, pressed, hammered, or cut. In this case, since the MELC is good for 2 weeks, kasi nga, di ba, nakalagay dyan, week 
two and three. So it is good for two weeks. So it means that this MELC, uh, MELC should be thought in 10 days since naka-unpack po siya and subtask po siya in 10 days. So ito po yung mga um, unpack learning competencies na kailangan po natin ituro within 10 days. Ayan. So, ayan, within 10 days. So, first day, two, three, within 10 days. So, in first day, um, the learner should identify and describe ways in changing the shape, texture, and other observable properties of solid material. Day two, describe what happened to solid material when bent. Day three, describe what happened to solid material when pressed. Day four, differentiate changes in material when bent or pressed. Day five, describe what happened to solid material when hammered. Day six, describe what happened to solid material when cut. And then we have day seven, differentiate changes in material when hammered or cut. Day eight, demonstrate how materials may undergo change by bending, pressing, hammering, and cutting. And day nine, group materials based on its ability to bend, press, hammered, and cut. And day 10, make an artwork using bent, press, and cut material. So, bakit kailangan ko po isa-isahin itong mga MELC na to, it, ito pong mga learning competency na to? Dahil napakahalago po nito sa aking topic dahil dito po ako kukuha, dito po ako kukuha ng mga activity o mga home experiment na gagamitin natin. Gagamitin natin para ituro for seven weeks. Okay. So, moving on to... MELC3, which is week 4 to week 5, which describe changes in the properties of matter when exposed to certain conditions such as temperature or when mixed with other material. So in this case, since the MELC is good for 2 weeks, kasi nga, week 4 and 5, so it means that this MELC should be thought in 10 days since, again, naka-untack po siya in 10 days. So, from day 1 to day 10, ang mga antak learning competencies na ito ay number 1, um, infer changes in the properties of solid material. Day 2, describe what happened to material when heated. Day 3, describe what happened to material when cooled. Day 4, describe what happened to solid material when mixed with other solid material. Day 5, identify the effect of mixing two solid material. Day 6, describe what happened to solid when mixed with liquid material? Day 7, identify the effect of mixing solid and liquid material. Day 8, describe what happened when two liquid material are mixed. And day 9, describe the changes in the different material when exposed to different temperature. And then we have day 10, prepare a fruit veggie juice out of available fruits and vegetables in your area. And lastly, we have... We have um, e -M -E uh, MELC 4, which is weeks 6 to 7, which is identify changes in material, whether useful or harmful to one's environment. So in this case, the MELC is good for two weeks. So it means, again, it should be thought in 10 days. So from day 1 to day 10. So these are the learning competencies for M uh, MELC4. So day one, identify changes in the material that are useful or harmful to one's environment. Day two, determine whether the changes in the material is harmful or useful in the environment. Day three, describe the harmful effect of the changes in the material to the environment. Day four, describe beneficial effect of the changes in the material. And then we have day five, suggest ways of preventing, minimizing the harmful effects of the changes in the material to the environment. And then we have day six, suggest ways to improve the useful effect of the changes in the material. Day seven, make a graphic organizer on the beneficial effect of the changes in the material. And then we have eight, um, prepare a table showing list of medicine food found at home, in school, 
in the community with a required storage temperature. And then we have nine, website on how food and medicine are affected by changes in the temperature. And then we have day 10, prepare a collage um, from used material available at home and then the community. So ito po, ha, yung mga MELCs na kailangan po nating tandaan, na kailangan po nating ituro within seven weeks. Okay, so next slide. So go back to our app, uh, go back to my topic, bringing the science laboratory at home for a grade for student. So it is known that science laboratory play an extremely important role in student active participation in the learning process. So laboratory practices play an important role in science. So laboratory application have been stated to help students define the concept of science in a more comprehensive and meaningful and meaningful. So it is regarded as an important component in science. So what is the importance of science laboratory? So the importance of science laboratory is it aroused and maintained the interest, attitude, satisfaction, open-mindedness, and curiosity in science. It also developed creative thinking and problem-solving ability. And it also promotes aspect of scientific thinking and the scientific method like formulating hypothesis and making assumption. And it also developed a designing, executing investigation observation, recording data, analyzing, interpreting results. And it also fosters science inquiry skills that can transfer to other spheres of problem solving. And then the most important one is it helps the students grow both appreciation of the orderliness of scientific knowledge and also in understanding the tentative nature of scientific theory. Okay, so in the current study, it had been revealed that laboratory practices or doing experiment in science bring major contribution. So when it comes to the benefit of the teacher, laboratory practice or experimentation in science lesson offers advantage to the student both by providing a permanence of knowledge and by supporting the development of science skills. So base po sa pag-aaral, um, it's shown that experiment have resulted in a positive attitude of a student toward a science laboratory. Ngunit, uh, sa panahon kong ito, sabi ko nga po kanina, it is a big challenge for us teacher to bring a science laboratory as this pandemic became a barrier or a problem. And we should not let this happen. Dapat tuloy pa rin po tayo para ma-maintain po natin ang interest, attitude, open-mindedness, and curiosity ng ating learners with the, uh, with the use of home laboratories. So, kailangan din po natin dito, of course, ang suporta ng parents or guardian. Dahil kung wala sila, it will not be materialized or possible na mag-succeed itong pagsiset up ng home, labato uh, home laboratory at home. So, I have here Different experiment and activities congruent and um, parallel to the MELC na, na discuss ko po kanina. Okay. So ito na po yung mga, ano, yung mga uh, activities or home experiment na pwede po natin ma-adapt na congruent or um, parallel sa ating MELC. So let me discuss this one by one. So because while children are stuck at home in the amid of coronavirus, um, they can do hands-on science experiment at home. So alam naman po natin na marami sa ating parents, they don't have a teaching background in teaching background or finding hands-on way for children to learn while at home. And it can be particularly time-consuming and difficult for them. Kaya nga po, gawin po natin ang lahat ng paraan para ma-motivate po natin ang ating learners at ang ating parents to, um, to support uh, this activity. Okay. So, for MELC Week 1, which is classify materials based on the ability to absorb water, float, sink, undergo decay, ito po yung mga materials na inilagay ko po dito. Okay, so this this is our 
sample activity for material that float, uh, float and sink. So, so in our course, um, so ito po yung materials na inalagay ko dito ay usual o normal na makikita sa loob ng bahay. So I need to modify or hanapan ng mga alternative materials, yung mga ibang kailangan sa experiment para lahat ng learners natin um, at the same time, ang parents or guardian ay hindi mahirapan na maghanap ng mga materials needed for the exper uh, experiment. That they, uh, that they were able to perform the activity using materials available at their home. At dahil tanggapin natin na ang rea uh, realization na hindi po lahat ng pamilyang Pilipino ay afford gumastos sa ganitong sitwasyon. That they need to consider yung mga materials na dapat gamitin. Kaya kailangan ko rin pong i-consider yung mga materials na dapat pong gamitin dito sa ating pong experiment. So, like in our first activity po, our experiment is entitled Material That Float and Sink. So, explain ko lang po ito, no? Okay. So, what um, we need here, or what we need here is a plastic bottle with a uh, cover. Pwede dito yung mga empty bottles like suka, toyo, or kahit ba um, bottle, empty bottle ng soft drink. So, they also need a plastic cups, pencil, eraser, uh, metal spoon, um, large stone, uh, large stone, um, plastic cover, and styrofoam. Okay, so need din po natin ng basin or pail na gamit sa bahay. And of course, water. So, in our, procedure, um, in our procedure, so first, get the material to be used for the experiment. Listen to the instruction given by the parents or guardian. So, if, if they can do it independently, pwede naman po. Pero be sure na guided pa rin po sila ng mas nakakatanda sa kanila. So, next is get the plastic bottle with cover. Take down note and describe the characteristic of the, uh, of the uh, plastic bottle. And they're going to write all their observation in a chart provided. So, dapat po sa module or worksheet na ginagawa po natin ay nakalagay po yung table or chart where they can put or um, record their answer para guided din po ang ating mga learners. And of course, after writing their observation, dito po sa ating, um, dito po sa ating chart, wherein dito po uh, makikita po natin dito yung mga name ng material, uh, wherein um, kailangan po nilang i-describe yung karakteristik ng material before placing it in the water, and their observation as to whether the material float and sink. So after that, um, they're going to answer. Uh, they're going to answer a guided question to come up with a learning concept like this uh, uh, to learning concept that mapa found out nila that some material sink very fast or slow. That there are some object uh, may mga object na uh, nakaka-affect yung kanilang characteristic like size, shape, um, for them to ability to sink and flow. Okay. And for our next activity, okay, so in our next science home experiment, po, uh, which is entitled, What Will I Turn Into? Materials that undergo decay. So in here, they will be needing this material like three pieces of plastic transparent cups, a slice of bread, plastic bottle, um, plastic bottle cups, rubber band, any leaves, like uh, mga vegetable leaves natin, like kangkong or kamote leaves, slices of banana, leftover food, um, water, and for the procedure, prepare the material needed. So read and listen to the instruction of your parents. So describe the characteristic of each material um, one at a time. So note the color, texture, size, smell, uh, uh, smell of the material that you use and cut each of the material into small pieces. So place um, each of the cut material in a separate transparent cup so uh, label them according to material and then moisten each set up with 
one half spoonful of water, and then cover every setup with small black plastic, and then tighten with plastic sheet with rubber band para ma-prevent yung insect na pumunta sa loob ng ating, ano, ng ating setup. So after that, bring your setup outside um, where it gets both sunlight and partial shade, uh, shade during the day. And then... Um, after you put them outside with sunlight or shade, visit your setup every day for seven days. So observe each material in every cup. So describe the texture, odor, size, and color of the material. Then after that, um, record your observation. So write it. So in this um, column, so in, you're going to write the name of the material. And then you're going to um, to describe the characteristic of the material before placing them in a setup. So describe them on a third day, um, and at the same time you're going to describe um, describe address uh, describe them during the seventh day. So, of course, um, you will be answering a guided question such as what are the characteristic of the material before cutting it? What are the materials did you add to every setup before covering it with a plastic sheet? Or when you visit your uh, when you visited or observe your setup after three days, what changes happen to the material? And when you visit or observe the setup again in seventh day, what further changes did you observe? So so from that um, guided question, magkakam up po sila with the learning concept that material uh, decay or is slowly destroyed or damaged. If there is a visible presence of water, air, and soil, and this factor that contribute to the decaying process of the, the material, ito yung mga nakaka-effect nakaka -effect para mag-decay na, mag yung mga material nito, like sunlight, water, soil, and the action of microorganism. Okay, so next. We have MELC2 or big entry that describe uh, in solid material when they are bent, pressed, hammered, or cut. So our home experiment naman po dito, ang gamit naman po dito ay napaka simple po. Napaka simple lang po. Wherein the learner should find, um, find out changes in the solid material. Uh, so in here, uh, what you need is candle, ice cube, wooden stick, ball pen, clay, paper, plastic cup, match. This activity, proper supervision of an adult is needed since um, gagamit po sila ng match and candle to observe the changes in solid material. So for the procedure, So, prepare the material needed. So, read and listen again to the instruction of their parents. So, with the given solid material, show ways by which you could change the state of the material, size, shape, and texture. So, answer the chart given and describe the changes that occurred in the material by writing their observation inside the table or chart and answer the guide question. So, in here, ang magiging um, learning concept po natin dito ay learners see that solid materials have different characteristics and the properties such as size, shape, colors, um, colors, and texture. So solid material can be changed through many ways by cutting, tearing, um, folding, twisting, bending, stretching, um, pressing, coloring, crumpling, melting, and others. So such action may change the material size um, shape, texture, color, and other characteristic of the uh, characteristic of the material. Okay, so next. So this naman po. So in our uh, next activity, um, home activity in our um, that um, pedi um, home activity. Uh, Part pa rin po ito ng MELC2, week 2 and 3. So in here, learners describe changes in solid material when they are bent. 
So materials needed are soft plastic ruler, wire, paper clip, metal spoon, rubber slipper. Kung mapapansin po natin, napakasimple lang po talaga ang mga materials na pwede natin gamitin dito. So they don't need to spend or purchase this material because it's already available on their home. So for this procedure, then each of the given solid material, observe and describe what happened to each material. Wherein, they're going to answer um, this uh, table wherein they're going to list the material and then describe what happened to the material when bent, followed by guided question. So in here, the, um, the learners uh, will formulate a learning concept that solid material can be bent, and when bent, this material may change their size and shape. So no new material is formed. So only the physical appearance of the material is changed. So bending of solid material is applied in situations like bending steels or uh, bending steels or iron in, 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 in this industry. Okay. So next activity is in here are most essential learning here is to describe solid materials when they so when press okay so learners answer the question what happened to solid material when press so they will be needing this material available at their houses like ripe banana pandesal or bread or yung, yung pandesal or bread na kinain nila kanina umaga. Okay, so we have small wood, clay, large stone, and sponge. And for our procedure, of course, so using a piece of wood or large stone, so pre press each of the given material, like the um, ripe banana, so pandesal bread, and the um, clay, and then the sponge. And after that, um, they're going to uh, observe what happened to the material they're going to record using the table below and again um, answer the guide question so in here the learning concept here naman po is solid material can be pressed so when pressed this material may change their size shape and other solid material may also change their texture when pressed so uh, however no new material is formed because only the physical appearance of the material is change so another activity is okay so another activity for MELC 2 week 2 and 3 is describe changes in solid material when they are hammered so materials needed are Black of wood, and can or lata, um, rocks, candy, piece of metal for uh, piece of metal, and for our procedure, hammer each of the materials like um, black of wood, empty cans, rock, candy, and a piece of metal, and then observe what happened, and then they're going to record their observation. Uh, in their science note or in this um, table. So in here, they're going to answer the guide question again and come up with a learning concept that solid material can be hammered. And when hammered, this material may change their size and shape and even the texture. So however, no new material is formed because only the physical appearance of the material is changed. Okay, so next is... Okay, so next is home experiment that described in solid material when they are cut. So this is another simple activi activity po that can be done at home because the availability of the material, um, availability of material. So what you need here is block of wood, again, an empty can. Wait lang po. Wait, 
Okay. So what you need here is a block of wood, empty can, lata, rocks, and candy. And and for our procedure, um, prepare the materials needed. So read and listen to the instruction of your parents. So with the supervision of the parent, hammer each of the given material, observe, and observe what happened. And then you're going to record your observation using the chart below, wherein you're going to list um, the materials in our table and then observe what will happen to this material after hammering them okay so in here po okay okay parang nalito po ako okay so next po natin wait lang po naman ha Sige ma'am, may isingit ko lang po ma'am habang inaayos niya lang po. Um, I-appreciate ko lang po yung mga nag-share po ng thoughts nila dito sa ating group chat. So, uh, according po kay Sir Almer, uh, nakakatulong po itong activities na to para hindi lang basta matututo yung mga bata. So, syempre, it's a way na rin para i-improve nila yung, uh, para mas ma-develop yung relationship nila with the parents. Parang ganun. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, so next is home experiment that describe changes in solid material when they are cut. So this is another simple at home because the availability of the material, uh, availability of material. So what you need here is, uh, ayun nga, um, So, uh, so ang mga materials po natin dito ay any kind of um, any kind of paper. So, pwede po tayong gumamit dito ng newspaper, cardboard or carton, used clothes, um, candy wrapper, and lid. So, for our procedure, so what to do is you're going to prepare a materials needed. So read and listen to the instruction of your parents, of course. And with the supervision of the parents, so cut each given material like the paper, the cardboard, or the carton, and the used clothes. So dito sa used clothes, pwede naman tayong gumamit dito ng mga basahan. And we can also use candy wrappers. And then after you cut this um, material, you can record your observation using, uh, using um, the chart below. Okay, so that's it. And then, next po natin, for our... So for our uh, for our next activity for MELC three week four and five with the activity titled "What Happened to the Solid Material When Mixed with Liquid Material?" Again, for our materials, it should be available at home, like garlic, um, like garlic cloves. Wait lang po, mga pasensya na po. Okay. Okay. So, for ELC, week 4 and 5, which is described changes in the property of material when exposed to certain conditions, such as temperature or when mixed with other material. So, uh, ang magiging activity po natin dito or home experiment po dito ay maaari po natin um, gawin po, uh, ang gawin dito ay we need 
materials na nakikita lang po natin sa kusina or kitchen lang uh, kitchen natin like coffee, creamer, salt, pepper, sugar, um paper clip for stable wire, so powder detergent and and, um, and sold. And for our procedure here, so we have to prepare materials needed. Um, again, um, the parent will read um, the instruction for their uh, children and prepare the material, like preparing a one tablespoon of each material listed in the table. So, ayan po. Okay, so after mixing and combining um, the materials given, so observe what happened. So you may also touch, feel um, the resulting mixture and then record your observation on the table below. So by checking the proper column, um, you are going to answer the guide question and for them to formulate a learning concept, Ito na po yung mga mapoformulate uh, na learning concept nila wherein when two or more materials are combined, a mixture is formed. So solid material can be mixed or combined with other solid material. So mixed material can be classified depending on the appearance of the resulting mi mixture. And when the solid material is mixed with other solid, solid material, each of the combined mixed material can be easily identified or distinguish, distinguish from one another, such as mixture called heterogeneous mixture. Okay, and for our last activity, for MELC3, so for week four and five, so with activity entitled, what happened to solid material when mixed with liquid material? So again, for our material, it should be... Uh, it should be available at ano, at home. Okay, like, ayan po, like, uh, garlic cloves, or pieces of drinking glass, tap water, vinegar, cooking oil, rubbing alcohol, flour, salt, pepper, vetchin, or leaves. So, and for our procedure, prepare the material needed, read and listen to the instruction of your parents. So, Get a clean drinking glass. So using a spoon or mix, combine solid material with the liquid material listed in the table. So after mixing the material, observe what, and then that, and that's the time um, they're going to record their observation in the table below by checking the proper column. Ito po. So by checking the proper column, then write down also the changes um, you observed when solid and liquid materials are mixed and combined. So, in here, um, they're going to answer again a guide question. So, for them to come up with a learning concept like solid material can be mixed or combined with liquid materials. So, some solid materials completely dissolve in liquid materials, but others do not. So, some solid materials settled, um, settled at the bottom of the container, while other stayed within liquid. So, some solid material spread out evenly in the liquid, but some do not. So, when mixed with liquid, some solid materials change in size, shape, color, but some do not. And lastly, for MELC week four and five, so they're going to identify changes in material whether useful and harmful to one's environment. So in here, po, um, for our uh, for MELC four, um, we have to identify whether uh, identify whether the material are useful or harmful to one's environment so in this activity so this is very simple then kasi kailangan po dito is for them to observe the surrounding but let me remind lang po baka po kasi lumabas sila kung saan saan po dito so for them to explore uh the useful and harmful effect of changes in the environment emphasize po natin na within so within their locality lang po sila pwedeng mag-observe or sa uh, sa lo, sa lo, loob ng uh, sa labas na labas ng kanilang 
bahay na malapit sa kanila. So in here, what they did is very simple. So they just need a notebook or a writing pen lang po to record their observation about uh, about their environment. And then answer the table um, given given by the given and followed by um, guide question po. So ito po yon. Ayan po. So in here, so brainstorm idea about the different changes in the material. So discuss the effect of these changes to our surrounding. So observe your observation in the table below by answering the proper column. So write down also the changes you observed. So by using this column, um, they're going to write down the changes that they observed in their, in their surrounding. So they're going to... Uh, identify the effect of the changes in the material to the environment so they're going to uh, uh, identify whether it is useful or not and harmful so by answering the guide question um, they were able to formulate or our learners they uh, will able to formulate a learning concept wherein some changes in the material are useful to the environment while others are harm so there are useful uh, changes in our environment like cutting piece of clothes to be made into handkerchief or cutting of fabric to be made into clothes um shaping piece of wood or lumber into chair or changing wood into a charcoal or for cooking so and there are harmful changes naman po like burning of old tires and other plastic material so throwing trash, um, trash of kerosene so when the material, it, uh, so ito po yung mga, ano, yung mga dapat po nilang uh, um, matutunan. So, yan po. Okay, so um, so yun lamang po. So um, may I leave this ano po, message po because um, I am a teacher. So I dream big. Um, I work hard. I don't let mistakes stop me. So I solve problem with grit and reflection and seek to improve and I collaborate with others. So I share my thinking, set goals for myself, and I help others to reach their goal and learn. Um, relentlessly every every day, and I never give up. So, so, sana po um, natulad po kayo sa ating mga ano sa ating discussion ngayon. So, thank you po and keep safe po. Ayan. So, thank you po, Ma'am Charlene. I hope nag-enjoy po tayo at marami din po tayong natutunan mula sa topic ni Ma'am. So, now we can proceed with our open forum. So, pasensya na po kung may mga ilang questions po tayo na hindi po natin may entertain kasi nga po limited lang ang ating time. Pero as much as we can, we will try to answer po some of your clarifications po uh, about the topic of Ma'am Charlene. Okay? So, gaya nga po nang sabi ko kanina para maging active ang ating open forum, uh, you can just uh, send a question mark po in our group chat and then I'll mention your name. Tapos, you can open your mic po para kayo mismo ang magtanong kay Ma'am Charlene. So, open na po tayo for our question and answer. So, habang inaantay natin ang mga magtatanong po, mag Babasa lang po tayo ng ilang mga uh, thoughts and comments dito. So, from Sir Sai Sai, these modules will help build rapport between parents and child as the lesson progresses each day. That is true. And it also builds strong communication between parent and child. And it will also help our parents to understand the strength and weaknesses of our child or our student. So, nakakatuwa kasi nga gagamitin din nila tong bonding time. So, yun yung uh, maganda na uh, isipin ng mga parents natin na although some of them are busy, pero uh, let's try to see things in a positive way na at least sa pagkakataon na to, mas mabibigyan natin ng time ang mga anak natin at makakapag-bonding pa po sila. Okay? So, 
from Sir Arturo, availability of material is essential to this laboratory. Thanks to Ma'am Charlene to modify the materials in each activity or modules. According to Sir Almer naman, very informative discussion. Ma'am Joy, congrats and thank you po. So may mga katanungan po ba tayo mga kasensei? Do we have any question po? I think Ma'am Charlene is uh, prepared to answer our inquiries po. So ang takeaway ko po dito mula sa topic ni Ma'am Charlene, dito talaga lalabas ang ating creativity mga kasensei. So isipin niyo yun, uh, as we do the activity, as we instruct our students to do the experiment at home, syempre mga ibibigay natin mga materials, yung mga readily available na parang hindi na sila mahirapan. From Ma'am Jocelyn, thank you. So wala po ba tayong katanungan mga kasensei? Ayan, from Ma'am May, thanks po for sharing your knowledge and congratulations. So nakakatawa po si Ma'am Charlene, no? Kasi ang mga binigay niya sa ating mga examples, mga talagang magagamit natin. And another takeaway ko rin po mula dito sa ating webinar, uh, let's not forget that the sole purpose of having a laboratory activity is to enhance and develop the basic scientific skills of our students. So, yung observing, classifying, ayan. Thank you pa. So, wala po ba tayong mga katanungan or sino po ba ang gustong mag-share ng kanilang mga uh, thoughts o yung mga natutunan, yung mga takeaway po? You can just comment uh, me. Para po i-mention ko yung name nyo. Sana po meron po kahit man lang isa sa atin dito na pwedeng mag-share ng mga thoughts niya or mga natutunan niya sa uh, webinar ni ma'am, sa topic ni ma'am. Uh, ma'am Charlene will surely appreciate pag nakarinig po siya ng kahit words of gratitude mula sa atin. Anyone po from our dear teachers, Kasensei? So nakakatuwa kasi puro positive po ang ating mga comments. Congratulations again, Ma'am Charlene. So wala po ba tayong mga katanungan? Or any kind congratulatory message po for Ma'am Charlene if you like. Okay, sige. So, habang inaantay natin kung sino po ang pwedeng magbigay sa atin ng kahit man lang uh, a short message for Ma'am Charlene, uh, let me take this time po to recognize and appreciate the effort and time given to us by Ma'am Charlene. So, uh, we will be giving Ma'am Charlene a virtual certificate of recognition. So let me just read to you the content of our certificate. So certificate of recognition is given to Ma'am Chaplin Joy P. Jr. for sharing her expertise as a resource speaker during the conduct of the science education in the new normal sessions for equipping and improving or what we call as the Project Sensei webinar series. And her topic is Bringing Science Laboratory at Home for Grade 4 Learners, held on June 29, 2020 at the Division of Navota City via SDO Navota Science Teachers. Given this first ah, 29th day of June, today is June 29, via Google Meet, signed by Sir Alejandro G. Ibanez Ceso. Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Officer in Charge, Office of the Schools Division Superintendent. So, congratulations, ma'am. Thank you, Asensya po. Naman, kung, kung ngayon, ma'am, a virtual certificate lang po muna tayo. So, we are, <laughs> we are deeply grateful for your time and expertise, ma'am. Okay, uh, salamat, ma'am. Welcome po, ma'am. So, another one we have from ma'am. Uh, Leonora, thank you daw po ma'am for a very informative discussion from Ma'am Rosario. Ayan, magagamit within the locality. Okay, and Sir Russell, I think, would give us a short message from Ma'am Charlene. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you ma'am. 
Okay, congratulations, Ma'am Charlene. Nag-enjoy ako sa mga activities na present mo. Sabi nga po doon sa sa comment, no, hindi na kailangan lumabas ng mga bata. Yes. So talaga sa bahay, magagawa na nila yung activities. And by doing these activities, we hope that our, our learners, our students, or pupils will develop the science process skills. Thank you po, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sir Russell. Thank you po. Thank you po. So, again, thank you, Ma'am Charlene. So, aabangan ka po ulit namin sa mga susunod na webinar series. Sana, in the near future, mabigyan pa po ulit kami ng chance na mapakinggan po kayo sa mga ganitong uh, opportunities. Willing pa po ba tayo, Ma'am? <laughs> Ay, class picture <laughs> daw po. Class picture tayo <laughs> <laughs> class picture daw po sir possible ba sir na makapag class picture tayo tanong natin sa ating uh, kasamang technical dito si sir DK ay si sir DK pala ang mismo nagsabi I'm so sorry <laughs> ayan so class picture uh, daw po class, ano, sa video Apo, paki on daw po ang ating mga video para makita tayo para magpa-class picture po tayo. <laughs> Sir, DK, ready na ba tayo? Picture na ba? <laughs> Naka-on na po ba ang ating mga video? Sige, magpakita na po tayo. <laughs> Para mapicturean daw po tayo. Attendance din po ito. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Ayan. DK. And I think that concludes our webinar series for today. Don't forget to answer our evaluation form to be posted in our group page. So I am again, Ma'am Katrin Tan, your moderator for today. And salamat po sa inyong active participation sa ating webinar. So ingat po tayo palagi and have a wonderful day. Thank you po.